Alcohols can be pretty easily deprotonated using a strong base to give a molecule that we call an alkoxide. Here are a couple of examples. We have two different types of alcohols. Phenols as well as straight chain alcohols work really well in this particular reaction. I'm showing the use of two different types of strong bases. There are other strong bases that we can use for this reaction as well. In addition to NaH, and Na, just pure sodium metal, which are very common. We also see this reaction being done with lithium metal or with pure potassium metal. Regardless of which base you're using, the outcome is going to be the same. We are going to be removing the hydrogen from the alcohol functional group. That's going to leave us with an O negative. This particular type of molecule is known as an alkoxide. And again, here's another example. We're just going to be pulling the hydrogen off of the OH group leaving us with an O minus, giving us a generic uh, name for this would be the alkoxide coming from an alcohol. The um, alkoxide ions are relatively stable, even though they do have a negative formal charge on them. We can predict the stability of our alkoxides uh, using the ARIO trick, if you're familiar with that, or any, um, any other trick that you have to help, us, help you predict stability. If we're using the ARIO trick, the first variable, A, the atom with the formal charge, is really not a variable in this particular case because all of these are going to be O minus. They're all deprotonating the hydrogen off of an O. Um, so they will all have the exact same atom with a negative formal charge, which means we jump right straight to variable number two, which is resonance, R for resonance. The more resonance structures you have, the more stable the alkoxide is. Uh, after that, we look at induction, which is the presence of electronegative elements near the negative formal charge. So if we had some halogens, for example, uh, induction, the presence of these electronegative elements increases the stability of the alkoxide because it helps to pull the negative charge away from the oxygen atom. Uh, again, if you're familiar with ARIO, the o, o, the o variable orbital is not an issue in this case because the negative charge is always going to be on an sp3 hybrid oxygen atom. So it's not, it's going to be a tie all the time there. Another factor that we can use is branching. This is not something that comes up when we learn about ARIO. Branching is referring to like just having alkyl groups branching in the molecule. We know that the more branching a molecule has, the less stable it's going to be. So branching, um, the, the less you have, the more stable the uh, alkoxide will be. So we can, we can compare, for example, a couple of alkoxides and we could say of these two, which one is more stable? This alkoxide up top is more stable because it has resonance, whereas this guy does not. So we know that this is a more stable alkoxide. And if we can identify the more stable of a set of alkoxides, that gives us information about the relative acidity of the alcohols that were used to generate those alkox alkoxides. Just like any time we're doing this sort of comparing, the more stable the alkoxide is, that tells us that that alkoxide came from an acidic or reactive or unstable, whatever word you want to use, unstable alcohol. So we know that if we have a very reactive alcohol, it's going to be very motivated to react and it's going to be forming a very happy and stable alkoxide. Whereas if we have an alkoxide that is not very stable, that means that this reaction is very sluggish. It doesn't want to move forward. That would mean that this particular alcohol is not very reactive because it doesn't have a lot of motivation to make this alkoxide. Not very reactive means that it's pretty stable. Um, and not necessarily very acidic. So again, we can use these tricks to help us rank or compare the stability of alkoxides. And once we get our alkoxides ranked in terms of stability, we can use that information to translate back to the relative acidity or reactivity or instability of our alcohols.